just like to introduce uh, Kevin from Tiernasaur. Um, nice to be here, Kevin. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, tell us a bit about Tiernasaur. For people who don't know Tiernasaur, tell us uh, tell us about it. Um, well, Tiernasaur is, uh, in its most basic form, it's a website that's providing information to people. Um, it's kind of a community-based website, so we have a lot of input from all of our members, and it's really kind of a... Uh, it's a homegrown kind of thing, and it, it is what it is today from the input of all the members. The reason it came about, really, my own personal reasons, is because I felt it was necessary, you know. But it was also kind of like at the time in Ireland, there wasn't really this sort of a movement going on. Like there was uh, groups in Canada and England and uh, things like this, but there wasn't really one in Ireland. So it was kind of like in answer to this kind of need that was that I felt was there, like you know. The unique thing about us really is. Um, just the sort of information that we look at, like we do consider the wider agenda of the banking and the governments and um, I suppose for want of a better word, conspiracy, like we do consider that, but it's from that sort of information, that sort of research that people have been led now to look at the law, the legal system and how the state, I suppose, the, 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 the mechanism of agenda has been constructed using legalese and, you know, um, contracts and agreements that we kind of signed up for without really realising it. You know, this is where the government establishes the right to seize your property and so on and so forth. So we really question these concepts of liberty and freedom and this is where sovereignty comes into it. Um, your relationship, um, your role in relationship to the state and to the wider kind of um, agenda for want of a better word. But it's what we're trying to do is empower people to show them that there is things that you can do in your life it's not all fear and it's not all gloom and it's not all worry. There is proactive things you can start to do. But that really starts with the process of education and realising that there is a deception being perpetrated and beginning to see the kind of um, the boundaries of our own bondage. Like like that quote, there are no more enslaved than those who falsely believe that they are free. But until you can see the chains that are putting you in the position you're in, you can't begin to break out of them like so this is really what we're trying to do is just highlight that information and get a sense of empowerment in the individual like that's a very good saying about the chains people have to see what's going on how did you come about realizing something was going on uh, see everybody's different in this regard and people come into the, the movement i suppose in different angles some people it's health and some people it's banking and some people something personally has happened in their life which has made them look at this information for me Personally, I've always kind of been inquiring into the unknown, like as long as, long as I can remember, I was reading about ghosts or Area 51 and, you know, these sort of things all throughout my youth, like, and as I got older then you start to realise that, you know, you hear about this sort of shadow government and this sort of, like, control, this dark control mechanism, and for a number of years it was very sort of, um, it's tough going, reading this information, trying to say it to your relatives, trying to say it to your friends, you know what I mean, you're going crazy because you feel that this is so important and yet people don't want to hear it. So, you know, I was just going along with my research and trying to get an idea of what was going on and then I came across John Harris's uh, presentation called It's an Illusion and I remember watching that and I was finished watching it, I was kind of confused, I wasn't sure, I knew there was something to this, there was something really important he was trying to say to me but I hadn't really grasped it yet. So I just started, you know, looking into the law and the common law, Breton law, legalese, and just started researching it for a couple of weeks. I'd be up two or three o'clock in the morning, just absorbing as much information as possible. And then gradually, when that information settles, the penny started to drop. And I realised that this, to me, it was really like I'd come to sort of at the time, it felt I'd come to like a conclusion of a really long book, and this was like the answer to all the things that I'd been worried about. But what I've actually come to learn, it was the beginning of a new book and it opens up all sorts of other avenues of inquiry. And But the one thing I've really got from this is that it takes the conspiracy theory aspect out of it and it puts it into fact. You're showing people legal documents, you're showing people how this has been constructed in a legal way. like you know. And once you can see that, you can see that all our bondage has been brought about by pieces of paper. You know, you start to realise that um, we can take responsibility for ourselves and undo these bondages that we're in like you know it's a really empowering thing and I've had a lot of personal experience with it. I've talked to a lot of people who uh, have tried different things different, you know TV license or they're in court or there's a man in the audience out there who is a sovereign taxi driver you know he's driving around based on sovereignty like you know and he has his documents in with the government and things like that so there's all sorts of stuff going on and I've verified it that it works in my own life by discharging bank loans or you know 
debt collectors chasing you and you get rid of them and they just stop coming after you like and it's real like I think the state of the country at the moment we're in a situation that we haven't seen since the days of the landlords like you know people are being evicted from their homes now we have a government in this country who you know when we think of government they're supposed to be created by the people to protect the people and protect their rights now yet you have a government who's prepared to legislate in favor of a private entity the corporate banks you really have to ask yourself like are they our government then have they not outgrown their purpose like you know and um, and these sort of things are, you know, it can be confusing when you're looking at the government and you say, how can they do that? It's so logical. Why are they selling off our oil for one pound and all this sort of stuff? But when you realise that the government is a registered corporation trading for profit on the international markets, it all starts to make sense. Like all these illogical things that they're doing start to add up when you see it's being more like a corporation, it's being more like a business, it's for profit, career politicians. I look at the back at the, the government as being a subsidiary of the wider, well, I don't know what the company is called, let's say the Crown, or that's a whole rabbit hole in itself, like, you know, but it's just a subsidiary and it's under this corporate um, Phoenician Templar law, you know, um, by their consent, they've, it's like they've set up a separate entity to themselves, this corporate entity. And then the realisation, you start looking into that more and you start seeing like the idea of the legal person and that there's, corporate, there's corporations that exist for every single one of us. So you start to say, well, at what point did I, a human being, agree to be bound to this system? At what point did I agree to be bound by the laws and regulations? And people say, well, you're born there, you have to put up with it. That's not freedom. Like That's just not freedom. So you look and you see the registration of the birth certificate. This is the social contract that Hobbes and Kant and all these people talk about. A, ch a parent submits an application of registration for live birth and with this a corporate entity is created by the government. And because they created this entity, they have complete control over it. So uh, there's a maxim that says a thing can only have control over what it creates. The government create these legal persons and therefore all the acts, legislation and obligations apply to it. Now, this is where the deception comes in. The reason the person is there really is to give us, the men and women, a get-out clause from tyranny. So we can say, actually no, in this regard I'm not going to represent the person, I'm not going to accept the liabilities of the person. The problem today is that the state aren't willing to give us that get-out clause. Um, all the stops are being pulled out to prevent this information getting out. People are going into court and they're being made an example of in the most unjust way. Like it, it makes your blood boil to think that you live in a system in a state that's supposed to be free, and you see the way it treats people. And all they're trying to do is stand up for themselves. Like you know, it's really, it's kind of like, uh, it's not a nice realization to think that about your country. Like you know, but at the same time, it can spur you on. The um, since the inception of Tunisor and up to now, <coughs> what has developed? What have you felt has been a plus point for Tunisor with your members? I mean, from an education point of view. From an educational point of view, what has been a plus point for Tunisor? Uh, well, what I think is unique about Tunisor, in my opinion, compared to the other groups that are, that are in Canada or England and so on, is that we really do have this community aspect to it like um, what we did last August on our, it's in the pipeline again for this August is we have Fail in the Ser, it's a festival of the free it's a free festival and it's all the infrastructure is put in, we've got stages and we've got tents and so on and the idea with this is to showcase I suppose the information that's being discussed on the site like we've all, all walks of life, I've never met more amazing people than I have in the last two years like some people are putting their energy, their time and energy into studying renewable sources of energy, free energy and things like that, but you'd have other people who are into permaculture and gardening and that sort of thing, and you'd have, you know, other people who are into the vaccines and medicine and health, and it's really, it's a really kind of collective of people. So to be able to, you know, the festival is just a great crack, really good, like-minded people, it's all free, we do it for free, and the idea is that people who come there contribute, um, they, they pay for the festival by contributing, so they want to do a talk, they want to, cook some food for people and this sort of thing and that was really I remember s sitting there last August and it was a real sense of like you know we could do this if we wanted to you know we have the skills we have the education we have the know-how and we have the passion to actually live this alternative way if we really want to like 
The beauty of obviously what you're doing is um, there's a lot of documented proof because it's the law. Um, if you were to open up somebody's mind, if somebody came to you and said, "What's this all about? What's your what's the what's the first thing you do? What's your approach to?" Um, it's difficult to say because you kind of have to read the, the person you're speaking to, the individual you're speaking to, and I choose different avenues for different people. But the kind of the take that I have on it, though, I feel is my own little twist is I would say to people that this is a very it's it's rooted in spirituality. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to believe because you, you separate the two concepts, like legalistic, it's written down, it's formally, how could that have any sort of spiritual concepts in it? But what I kind of, uh, what I think from my research is that what the agenda or what the powers that be have done is that they've superimposed a sort of artificial law on what is already a natural order of the universe, do you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the laws of the universe, the laws of gravity, the laws of karma, like when I think of law, it would exist whether we were here or not as human beings, but they've superimposed this thing, on, uh, this artificial one, on top of it. Like, so, uh, to me, like when I think of the concept of the legal person, this is going to something I'm going to talk about when we talk. And um, what is essentially doing is, and what this whole agenda, for, as far as I can see, I don't. It is a, an info war. It is an info war, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that as well. And it is, it's a, it's a kind of a spiritual war. And what the, what the legal person essentially does is it draws our consciousness further away from this inner source of who we are, where our sovereignty comes from. And it's much like the ego. So I see the legal person is like the legal ego. And much like the mental ego, we believe that this character that we play is us. It's the same with the legal person. We're deceived into believing that that is us. And by doing so, we forget our true self, we forget the true power that we have within us, and it's all about conditioning. And the people are conditioned to be so afraid of this of the legal system that they wouldn't dare stand up in court and say, speak their heart and speak what they mean. Like you know, and I think that's very telling. I think it's a, it's a, um, definitely it's the fear with people. I completely understand from the spiritual side. This has been taught to us and said to us on a number of occasions by a lot of our guests. They all seem to be going back to this spiritual awakening and know who we are and find out who we are. So we can completely relate to that. Um, from a um, with you and the and all the people, how many people have started to actually fight the system? Again, it, it's kind of difficult to say. Like we have uh, about we've over three thousand members on the site now. What tends to happen is somebody might join up, they'll absorb the information. And they'll go on about their lives and they'll they'll use it in their day-to-day -day lives but they not, might not report back everything that they're doing you know so it's hard to kind of give an accurate idea and then you might have somebody will sign up on the site but say 10 of their friends or something there's one guy i know he said all my friends use the site but they don't sign up so it's hard to get a good idea but it definitely is permeating into the consciousness it definitely is getting through we know this from the Gardaí, like we know this by the, by the way the Gardaí are responding to it, they recognise the information, they ask people what groups you're affiliated with straight away, like the, you know, so it is kind of having some sort of an impact on the system. Um, I personally know of scores of people who have done stuff, whether it be a small thing of dealing with a, a Lewis ticket or something like that, you know, up to, you know, Daryl O'D and his mortgage of 700,000 I think it was. So there's a big spectrum of people doing different things. And again, like I found that when people are ready, it seemed like for me when I was researching it, I'd never had any trouble, I'd never had any reason to use any of it. And then all of a sudden I got two fines in one day. And I was just like, there you go. Now, it was like when I was ready for it, the opportunity came along. And I think that's, that seems to be what's happening for people. Like whether they're kind of, I don't know, subconsciously uh, 